deeply appreciate you in the diaspora for the support given to me in my time of difficulty with Hellsman Massacre. Appreciate the support of Benway people in diaspora for the my re-election for a second term. Your prayers, your support, and your goodwill towards me. Deeply appreciated. To me, my second term as governor is another mandate to defend and serve the people of Benway State. Let me say that my first term mistakes were made and lessons have been learned. Now, no political godfather, and so I'm determined to provide dividends of democracy to the people of Benway State. And I take responsibility for all that happened in Benway State now as a leader. Successes and failures. I take responsibility. I don't want anybody <laughs> to go more play game on anyone. Any damn thing that happens, as governor of the state, I take responsibility. The analysis of our current security challenges standing. Flood Hills men violent attacks started two decades ago. As for today, Hills men have attacked 19 of the 23 local governments, claiming over 5,000 lives between 2013 and 2018. Over 195,000 homes, 30 churches, property worth billions destroyed by Hezbollah attack. That is the map. As you can see, just four local governments that are lucky that were not attacked Otuko, Ponshisha, Ushogo, and Kanika. Government respond to the attack. Federal government failed to cause the crisis at the beginning despite the reported end. We think this. You will permit me to just give you some headlines right from when this thing started. Publications from the media. People took responsibility. And these were flying men. They, in this reportage, why we keep 86 persons in Plateau State, Mayor Tiala, break silence. The killings in Plateau State by Flamid Nationality Movement will remain solid and not shaken by the winds. These are coming from human beings, not just ghost people. Another one, why we keep a deceased persons in Plateau State. Same Mayor Tiala, we're justifying this. Another publication, Fulani Hellsman Crisis, Trouble for Natural Resources. So it wasn't about uh, grazing, as they say. But this particular one, I want to just read the whole statement by Fulan. Fulani Nationality Movement, after intensive deliberation on the state of the nation in the context of the recent killings and national uproar, made today in Kano, the capital of Kano State, among other things, the Fulani deliberated on attacks on cartoons by rustlers, kidnap of Fulani men and women in some parts of Nigeria, displaced of Fulani traditional settlement in northern Nigeria and some parts of southern Nigeria. Stealing of property belong to Fulani cattle herders and so on. The group also deliberated on the situation in Nigeria by the irresponsible cause for restructuring of Nigeria. The historic and vicious attack on Fulani herders by southern nationalities and their cohorts in the middle belt. The plot to ensure that Fulani are pushed to the background in the power equation of Nigeria. The vicious campaign against the God ordained place of Fulani as the leading star guide in Nigeria. And after extensive deliberation, we hereby make the following declarations. First, the killings in Benue of the thief is well deserved. 
it was a revenge attack on a series of onslaughts on the Fulani, which was most serious on November 17, 2017, when 30 Fulani men and women were killed in Nasarawa State. We noticed the sacred culture of the Tik people as demonstrated even in the 1804 Jihad, when they obstructed our ordained conquest of Nigeria. We condemn the media propaganda being waged against the Fulani and uh, supported by Yoruba Igbo and their big country allies in the Middle Belt. That we are aware of plots by minority ethnic groups in the Middle Belt and attacked by Fulani settlements. That we have asked all Fulanese across West Africa to raise money and arms to prosecute the ongoing war. We call on all Fulanese to prepare for this holy war. There is no going back. All over the world, there is a, uh, Nigeria is the only country that given to Fulani by God. We oppose the anti raising law which obstructs the ability of Fulani men to move freely and stay anywhere in Nigeria. The Fulani, if not for the British, would have actually conquered the entire Nigeria which God has ordained as our dominion. That the cattle colony is the only solution to the crisis, whether the federal government or state government accept it or not. We have Fulani herdsmen all over West Africa. We ask Fulani herdsmen all over West Africa to move to Nigeria and penetrate every corner for the upcoming jihad. We have asked them to be armed since it is the only language that Nigeria understands. The Nigerian government has failed to protect us. Those who oppose foreign cattle trade to be cautious of the consequences. We are ready for the worst. We are prepared for war. There is one hope for peace. If only attacks on Fulani heads when stop and the Fulani is allowed to settle anywhere that the Fulani choose to settle in Nigeria. We are Nigerians and are free to settle anywhere we desire our culture, our families, our commerce, and our values to the glory of Almighty Allah. Any attempt to reverse these demands will be met with on hope. With up, uh, holy uprising never seen in the history of Nigeria and in the scale combined only with the 1804 Jihad. A war is enough for the wise. The Fulani is capable of defending itself. Signed by Badu, Salisu Amadu, National President and Secretary Umar Ami Shehu. So you can imagine why we say that the federal government failed to call the crisis at the beginning despite early warnings. Because I personally wrote to the presidency and intimated them, attaching copies of this press conference and my discussion with uh, Mayeti Allah and what they stood for. I wasn't anything to do with Brazil or was to continue the invasion of the remaining part of Nigeria as was done in 1804. After 200 years, they decided to regroup and to come and take over. So all that they were saying was not anything but a plan to completely take over the country. The federal government has not shown genuine efforts in reforming livestock business as exemplified by the Bainway State Open Grazing Prohibition and Ranching Law of 2017. All that we hear them say, I'm a member of National Economic Council. And we deliberated on this matter after the killings. And it was resolved that the committee be set up, that was done, and came back to council, and we agreed that there must be a program. 
I mean, uh, the committee headed by the governor, Ebony, went around, came to Benue State and other states that were affected. And we eventually drew out a plan, our National Lifestyle Transformation Program. And we categorically say that the only solution to this problem should be ranching. And federal government took this matter and decided to frustrate it. They never wanted implementation. And until they instructed ministry, federal minister of agriculture to initiate a process of a cattle colony which was resisted by Nigerians. And thereafter, the issue of Ruga came in, which has been resisted. And another one is on the way coming. And I believe that by the grace of God, these two will be resisted by Nigerians. Today, there is a proposal that the maritime law of Nigeria should be amended. And three kilometers both sides of the river should be annexed and given to the federal government okay. so that they will have control. For us, in Benue State, it means government house will be under the control of the federal government. So cattle will be allowed to move freely and do their evil. <laughs> Those of you who have visited home recently, especially in Abuja, the headquarters of Nigeria, that is where cattle are doing open grazing, openly. They obstruct traffic, and it will amaze you that even at the airport, yes. you have cattle moving freely Free. as they want. On the wrong way, they move. They are all over the place, eating flowers and all those things, obstructing people from entering their offices. It's a normal thing that is happening. So, government has not shown any kind of commitment at that level. <coughs> Otherwise, what we did was a painstaking uh, research that we conducted, and we discovered that ranching remains the global best practice for animal husbandry. And this went through the process, and it was passed, and that is what is being obtained. And I think that the federal government we need to be sincere to address this matter. I believe that they have the capacity if they want. Today, with the atrocity that been committed by herdsmen in Nigeria, compared to iPod, and then compared to the recent shark movement in Nigeria, why have these two groups been proscribed? Why have they not been branded terrorists? looking at the magnitude of the destruction and the pains <coughs> and the killings that have been inflicted on Nigeria. Today, all parts of Nigeria are worrying in pain. For attacks of Lalimen, even yesterday, I heard, or rather today when I was reading on social media, it was reported that the Reverend Father was killed by Hersman. Why should you live in a country in the 21st century that government is not ready to take steps that can address the challenges that we have? The recent uh, comment by Mr. President in Dubai that I am responsible for not accepting uh, open grazing, and that is why there are crises in Nigeria. It is true, he said it. Several times he cautioned me and told me that until we go back to 1950. But I told him we're in 2017 and 2018. So why should we be talking about 2050? Because in 1950, when cattle routes were designated and created and grazing areas were capped, what was the total population of Nigeria? Less than 40 million people living in Nigeria. Today, by approximation, we have more than 200 million people with a landmass of still uh, 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 90, uh, uh, 923,000 square kilometers. 
but even less because of good uh, desert encroachment, ceding of Bakasi to the Kenya Road. And so, those cattle routes and grazing areas that were designated are now occupied by human activities. So we must try to look at what other countries are doing. This has been my explanation and justification for uh, presenting an executive bill to the assembly for the restriction of cattle movement in the states. Because those cattle routes they are talking about, they are no longer there. Those grazing areas they are talking about, they are no longer there. And in Benue State, even in the 1950s, when these cattle routes were created, none was gazetted in Benue State. So you cannot hold us responsible. If others were gazetted in the north and other states, people are afraid to go and do their open grazing in those areas. But my argument has always been that we must be proactive as we are growing and the population is also growing, we must look at the alternatives that can bring peace for farmers and herdsmen. For us in Benway State, as it is today, the, there are common issues that we are trying to manage. The people are fighting themselves, as we heard earlier. We have struggled, we have suspended cheese, we have done several things to ensure that we have peace. Because the land is no longer there. And so, if you go to uh, the analysis, as you can see, uh, World Cattle Inventory Ranking of Countries by USDA, uh, as you can see, India with over 300 uh, million heads of cattle. Brazil, 226. China, over 100. In America here, over 93 million. Uh, European Union, 89, and so on, as you can see. But what is the total cattle in Nigeria that are creating this kind of uh, challenges that will happen today? 20 million, as at the last count. But they are not allowed. So how can you marry what is happening in India with over 300 million cattle? But yet, you hardly see cattle roaming about. I was in Swaziland some few years ago, a very tiny country in the Southern Africa. And there too I was told that their major export earning is beef and milk. But yet they ranch. And I saw those ranches myself. Small stakeholders, farmers, were able to provide ranch at their backyard and provided feed. And my argument has been that there are multiple advantages in uh, adopting ranching for both farmers and herdsmen. One, herdsmen will no longer live with reptiles in the forest. They will stay at home, their children will go to school. For the farmers, their waste can be good feeds. For the herdsmen, the three people eat a lot of meat. And so during festivities, they go to get these fees. But you can also pay a token to collect rice straw, soybean straw, and other agricultural webs to feed your cattle. And so it is the same trade by butter. You do me, I do you. That one God will not bless. <laughs> so they say it. So, and these people have an agenda, as I read. You can see that it is clear. If it were about cattle business, they would have accepted ranching because it's the best approach. In fact, in Nigeria, I'm told that Americans cannot eat our beef back home because it's more of fiber than meat because the way they trip from Sokoto to Lagos and Botacot. And no milk that is nutritious gets into your system. You're drinking their milk. It is nothing. It has no nutrients there to support the body. And the meat, there is nothing. So this is the challenge we have. The federal government, as I said, have refused to adopt an approach that will solve this problem. And uh, that makes me to believe that maybe they also have 
and the general. And I believe that Mr. President is not aware of these things that are happening. And I'm very happy with the recent appointment of ministers. Those people that created problems for us, especially in Bayway State, they were excluded. Like the former Minister of uh, Interior, the former Minister of uh, Defense, uh, Defense. Yes. the former Minister of uh, Defense, the General of Police. Mm. These were people who were not interested in finding a solution to this problem. All their comments were to paint Bayway in bad light. But I appreciate Mr. President, because such advisors cannot effect development for a country, Nigeria. For we uh, strongly oppose the grazing reserves, grazing routes, uh, cattle colony, and rural settlement. It is not accepted in Benway because we don't have the land. The proposed amendments of the maritime law will not be accepted in Benue State. Because we have two rivers in Benue State, in Abedua and Dakasla. If you allow that law, and I'm happy that our legislators are here at the national level representing us. And it is a challenge, and I believe that we will take up this and uh, ensure that we preserve the land on our behalf. In my own local government, if you take three kilometers from both sides of the river, then the entire local government will be under a federal government. And then I have no control whatsoever. And the land you has gives the responsibility to the state. And so on this we stand, and I believe that for Benway, I am working closely with my legislature at the state level and at the federal level, but we're working together and we have all discussed this and this will not be allowed, at least in Benway State, if other states will allow it, for us in Benway State, we are not going to allow it. No. No. It's a many, but we are, our determination is enormous that convince and determine to explore every available opportunity within the law to provide security for life and property, advance development and progress of the state. From all indication and from what you have heard, from what you have seen, this is the Nigeria that the Fulanese want in our country. And that is why we are resisting them. We cannot be slaves to Fulanese in Nigeria. We have allow them the right to live, they are free to live in Benway State, but we are insisting that any family man who wants to live in Benway State and do cattle business must ranch. Mm. If you don't ranch, you can look for an alternative place. If you want to live in Benway State and do any other type of business, you are free to do so. No one will harass you. And under my leadership, I'm ready to give protection to all. Nobody will be exempted. And in fact, our law prohibiting open grazing is being enforced and implemented. As I talk to you, we have succeeded in convicting 81 people who violated our law. And this includes indigenous, thieves and idolaters who violated the law. The majority of them are flamings. And anywhere we see cattle doing open grazing, we apprehend such cattle. And when they run the way, the headers run the way, we arrest the cattle. For the time they... <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, 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 the provisions of the law is that we arrest the cattle. So we have been arresting them. <laughs> and the provision is that you quarantine them for seven days. And if the owner does not come to collect, you auction them. <laughs> And so, and so, so far, the close to 3,000 cattle were arrested through our livestock guard and quarantine. They came, and some of them were arrested them and were prosecuted them. Mm -hmm. 
but they pay fines, and so we allow them to transport them by vehicle out of the state. So our law is being implemented. And so these are the destruction that uh, we had during, those are some of the destruction, like I said, the destruction was a levels. Uh, what you saw there was a farmer's warehouse, uh, of course, farmer's store. Here is one of the clinics that was destroyed. Here is a church that was destroyed. And several primary schools and secondary schools were also part of it. These people, they have an agenda, as I said, because destroying schools, destroying health facilities, destroying homes, and uh, even killing with guns, and still uh, butchering those people was a clear indication to put fear into us so that we will not attempt to challenge them. But for us in Bengal State, we are determined more than ever. If our forefathers in the 1804 resisted them, why can't we do it at this time? So the challenges of our administration have been security infrastructure, education, now infrastructure, energy shortages, unemployment burden, health and sanitation issues, agricultural development, commerce investment, and industry, banditry, thuggery, militancy, uh, of course, uh, economy has been a problem. Um, Benway State may interest you that we have the highest wage bill in, ben in Nigeria after Lagos and River State. Benue State is a big challenge. No industries. The issue of IGR has become a very big problem in trying to raise money to augment what we get from the Federation account. And all these challenges we have talked about here uh, is about ensuring that we have money to be able to contain with them from unemployment to all those on agriculture and development and so on. Banditry is a big challenge and I'm robbery. These are local criminal uh, things that are happening within the state. We're doing everything possible but we're still having these challenges apart from the communal clashes that we have once in a while with our communities. Uh, one notorious bandit, uh, Ghana, have created so much pain. Outside the foreign helmsmen, I think this is uh, the worst thing that Bengal State have had. All the kidnappings that are happening, all the crisis between Taraba and Bengal State today are being done by Ghana and this group. At a point, he had his thief and uh, other forms of traditional rulers. Himself was the governor of uh, his kingdom. And we are working with the security men. We are after him. We are willing to do more. And uh, he has escaped several times from the hands of the military and other security agencies that were on the train. Um, we have succeeded in dislodging him completely now. He's on the run, but occasionally we have issues of kidnappings from his group. It became so terrifying and influential in the, uh, their kingdom. Uh, several people have suffered members or a member of the assembly in Taraba was kidnapped after paying 35 million naira. They also killed him. So there has been a problem. There was an incident, they robbed a bank and took away 130 million naira and procured arms. And uh, what you hear 
around Sankra area between Kural and uh, Shitile, between uh, Shitile and uh, Ukum are all masterminded by this criminal called uh, Ghana. And so it has been a big problem. We inherited the issue of salaries um, areas. Uh, we have tried at the state level, we've been able to reduce the areas from 10 months to four. And uh, at the local government, we are still battling. Uh, we are still in areas of 10 months. But from 2018 to date, we have been able to pay salaries up to date. Pension and gratuity, we have recently, through the House of Assembly, enacted a law to domesticate the Pension Act, and we believe that this will go a long way in facilitating us to secure money at friendly interest rates to be able to solve the issue of areas of pension and gratuity and uh, uh, so on. I said before, they are part of the challenges, boundary, corner, disputes, this we are still containing with adoption, kidnappings, drug abuse, and courtesy and cyber crimes. All this, what we have done at our own level in person is to enact laws that can really check some of these um, balance that is happening. The issue of adopting and kidnapping, there is a law stipulating the own death penalty. Uh, we have done that. Drug abuse and courtesy, we have also enacted laws to ensure this including cyber crimes. Well, like we said about the challenge of administration, uh, the deaths we recorded because of land health and so on, uh, those are the statistics, as you can see them. Um, uh, it continues as you 